Welcome to this IR Sidekick launch tutorial. Launch is used to automatically launch supporting applications when you run a game like iRacing. Launch will also automatically close those supporting applications when you exit the game. Let's walk through the main toolbar buttons, which are Exit the program Change program options Go to the IR Sidekick Discord server for assistance. Go to the IR Sidekick YouTube channel to watch tutorials. Update to the latest version. Save the game and application settings. Let's walk through the program options, which are Launch can auto start with Windows. Launch can also start minimized in the Windows system tray. Close applications on exit means close all launched applications when launch is shut down. Finally, applications are normally launched sequentially but can be launched concurrently if you desire. More on that topic later when we discuss the application start options. Let's close the options window. Launch watches for games being run and then launches supporting applications. We have to configure the games to watch out for, and specify what applications should be launched for that game. The tree view on the left shows a summary of all games and applications. This is an example where a lot of games or programs are being watched. There are numerous applications configured for automatic launching and shutdown. This is what you will see when you run launch for the first time. iRacing and launch have been automatically configured for you. Launch is added as a program to watch so you can automatically launch other applications when launch starts. Games or programs can be added via the toolbar add game button, which looks like a game controller with a green plus symbol. There are three ways to add games. Select a running game. Select an installed game. Select an on-disk game executable. The first method is the easiest. Simply run the game or program you want to watch for. As a simple example I will run a text editor called Edit Pad. Within Launch, press the Add Game Toolbar button, click Edit Pad, how easy was that? Unfortunately this does not work for all games, a lot of games run as a protected process which can't be selected. The second method is where we select an installed program. Click on Add Game. Click on Installed Programs. Click on the game or program you are seeking. Again, this method does not always work because not all games register an uninstaller within Windows. The third method is where we select an on-disk game executable. Click on Add Game. Click on Manual. Click Select a Program. The dialog opens at your Start Programs folder. You can navigate to the C drive in any specific folder. Once you locate the executable, click Select it, then click Open. Games or programs can be deleted via the toolbar Delete Game button, which looks like a game controller with a red minus plus symbol. Games can be reordered via drag and drop. Now we need to define the applications we want launched when a game is run. Click select the game that needs applications launched. Adding an application is done via the Add Application Toolbar button, which looks like a window with a green plus symbol. Adding an application is exactly the same as adding a game, use one of the three methods. I'm going to add a few applications for demonstration purposes. Applications can be deleted via the toolbar Delete Application button, which looks like a window with a red minus plus symbol. You can reorder applications under a game via drag and drop. You can also drag an application and drop it onto a different game. A copy of the application will be created under the drop game. It's a quick way to add the same application to multiple games or programs. So now we have a list of games or programs, 
and some applications underneath them. The next step is to perform a little more configuration. When a game is selected, there is a game monitor panel on the right. This shows the running status, name, title and executable. There is an option to delay launching applications until the game's main window opens. This is useful for games like iRacing that can take several minutes to start up. There are several reasons to wait for the game window to appear. 1. There may not be any point launching the supporting applications before the game is ready. 2. Waiting for the game window to appear avoids extra loads on your computer while the game is loading. When an application is selected there is a launch application panel on the right. Again this shows the running status, name, title and executable. Applications can be disabled via the checkbox at the top. This prevents the application from being launched and closed. Let's walk through the application start options. You can specify startup arguments, processing priority and window style. A launch delay can be specified. It's the number of seconds to wait before launching. This is to prevent high CPU and disk overheads when a game is starting up. Applications are normally launched sequentially. Again this is to prevent high CPU and disk overheads when starting a bunch of applications at the same time. Launch will sequentially go through the list of applications defined under the game that just started running. For each application, wait for the delay seconds, then launch. This is repeated for each application, one by one. This means the application delays are cumulative. Each application's delay is from when the game starts plus any prior application launch delays. If you have three applications, each with a 10 seconds wait, the first application will open after 10 seconds, the second after 20 seconds and the third after 30 seconds. If you turn on the launch applications concurrently option, all applications are launched at the same time. Each application's launch delay is from when the game started. Using the previous example, all applications would open 10 seconds after the game starts. This can cause a short peak in computer overheads and a lot of concurrent visual activity. On a competent PC with 8 cores and an SSD drive, it's entirely possible to use a delay of 0 seconds and launch applications concurrently. Let's walk through the application close options. Click on the close options tab. Auto close means automatically close this application when the game stops running. Some applications don't respond to close requests. In that situation you can use the force kill option. This is somewhat unpleasant, the application may not save settings and log entries when killed. Depending on your Windows security settings, launch may need to be run as administrator in order to use the force kill function. You can manually launch games and applications. Click select a game or program. If the game is not currently running the green running man toolbar button will be enabled. Click the Running Man button to launch the game and associated applications. The Spaceship Launching Toolbar button will also be enabled. It's used to only launch the game supporting applications that are not already running. The Spaceship Launch Toolbar button is also enabled when you click Select an application, provided that application is not already running. This is useful for manually launching just one application. Be aware of the Windows behavior when starting applications. When Windows starts a new application, that application gets the input focus. When a bunch of applications are launched it causes a lot of activity, the input focus will quickly switch to each application as it starts. If you are typing a message into Discord when a bunch of applications are launched, your keystrokes will be diverted to each newly launched application, one by one. It can be confusing and even frustrating. When multiple applications start launching, you may have to avoid typing for a while. In the near future, Launch will have the ability to shut down selected Windows services when a game starts running. Many people do this on the Microsoft Windows platform to ensure good game performance.